Well, hello, truth seekers and boat rockers. It's Bobby Faulkner here with you again today, high atop the Hualapai Mountains in Kingman, Arizona, with my wife Liz behind the camera and Tony Holder in the uh, production area. And we're bringing you our ninth installment of the Evil Side of Beautiful series we've been doing. This is going to be a four-part segment called Twisted Sister. We do these videos because we're not going to take it anymore either. We're tired of these people lying, these charlatans, these devils in the church. Without any further ado, Twisted Sisters, first off, Paula White. God gave me hits and lips for a reason. He did it. He did it. And I work it too. I work my hips and lips. I do. Well, Paula, God gave other people hips and lips as well. Well, Paula, if you would worry less about your hips and lips, you would probably be able to spend more time studying what the true gospel is that saves today, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, and of course, Ephesians 1, 13 seals the deal. But you have to spend all this time and money on things other than the truth of God's word rightly divided. And that's what we always tell you out there, folks, 2 Timothy 2, 15, you have to study to rightly divide the word of truth, so look that up and learn it and live it and get it drilled into your head and into your heart, folks, because that's what you have to do. People like Paula White, they just don't do it. So, Paula, you know, once again, you're just showing your true colors here. You care nothing about the gospel, and uh, God doesn't instruct you on anything, especially when it comes to something like this with numerology. 2018, in fact, the number 18 means to be alive. It means life. You see, God himself, all throughout his word said, hey, all first belong to me. He lays claim to it. He says that first are holy. It's the irrevocable giving over to God, things that belong to him that he lays claim to. It's what we call the principle of first fruits. The children of Israel have just entered in and they've conquered. They've gone across the Jordan. They've conquered and now they're getting to their first city. It's called Ai. And suddenly where they were having victory after victory, they get defeated. Why do they get defeated? The Bible says that Joshua falls down and he begins to cry out and he's praying. And God says, Joshua, stop praying. Stop crying. He said, listen, the problem is with Achan. He's touched the accursed thing. Well, what's accursed mean? It means devoted things. And devoted is the same word as a first, a first fruit. Well, Paula, uh, this numerology stuff that you're into, it's spiritual witchcraft. Uh, most people that know that you're lying from the pulpit, so to speak, is uh, spiritual witchcraft anyway. You make stuff up as you go along thinking you're having private conversations with God when, of course, we all know there is no private interpretation of prophecy of the Bible. So you make this stuff up. And this first fruits, this was talking about Achan, Paula. This was talking, this isn't something that's good. It's not a, a blessed thing. This is a cursed thing. So when you speak about Achan and, and this, the children of Israel, Israel here, well, number one, it's Israel. It's not talking anything about us. A lot of you people in the Word of Faith movements and, and, and as well as some other denominations love to think that we're the spiritual Israel, that somehow the United States got transformed into the Bible, especially into the Old Testament, and this is about us. Well, it's, it's not about us, Paula. And uh, the first fruit uh, he's mentioning of has zero to do with us whatsoever. And so basically you're just lying as usual. But it's crucial because he says, do not come before me empty handed. And you go, well, how do I do it? Well, for your first fruits offering, because I don't even want to say gift because this is so holy. It belongs to the Lord for your first fruits offering. And first fruits is the full of. It's not the tithe. Tithe is one tenth of your gross income. It's the first tenth, not just any tenth. That's why it redeems the curse. But the first fruit is the whole of. Many of us bring one day. Some of us bring one week. Some of us bring an entire month's salary. Now notice here about the one day, the one month, the, 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 or the one week, the one month of salary. Well, of course, I'm surprised she didn't say one year. 
You know, I'm surprised you didn't say, uh, give your retirement to her and sign that off and give you her, your, her your routing number and bank account number. I mean, for goodness sakes, there's no shame in this stuff. No shame. And she's not the only one, of course, but no shame in this whatsoever. And uh, I mean, basically, you know, Paula, it's just despicable, as well as this here. And you can't really say, well, this amount of this amount, but it just cost us a certain amount of money to get things to you, to air to get the gospel out, etc. So for your first fruits offering of $50 or more, I will give you the book as well as a devotional. Now, Paula, what this is all about is really just you getting more money for things, for material stuff. It has nothing to do with getting the gospel out. God didn't instruct you to do this stuff. God is not going to pay your bills. You've been making your money and paying your so-called bills and airtime to get the gospel out, which you have no idea of, off of people's backs for years and years. You've learned well from your mentors. So this has nothing to do with getting the truth of the gospel out. If you knew that the gospel really was 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4, that is how people are saved by that finished cross work. And again, Ephesians 1.13, believing in that, then you would push that and you wouldn't be worried about money. You wouldn't be worried about plastic surgery and things like that. And I'm not opposed to that, folks. If somebody wants to get plastic surgery, have at it. It's just the fact that this is all being done off the backs of people out there that think they're giving to God. God doesn't have a routing number. God doesn't have a bank account. You're not giving to God. You're giving to these frauds and charlatans is what you're doing. And they're buying big houses and big cars and plenty of them and filling up their bank accounts while you go poor and, and nothing is happening for you. So it's just a manipulating thing, begging and asking for money. So right now, I want you to click on that button and I want you to honor God with his first roots offering. And Paula, I mean, really hit the button on the screen there for the first fruits offering. This isn't for God. Stop lying. People, stop giving to people like this. What is wrong with you? Get a clue. Wake up. We did this. We were in it. We were in it up to our eyeballs. I'm not just talking about this with such a vehement attitude because we have some personal vendetta. I lost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. My wife did. Uh, Tony Holder, our production, uh, uh, doing our production on this. We've all lost things to do to these people, but we woke up. And we learned how to 2 Timothy 2.15 to rightly divide the word of truth. We study now and we see where we belong in the scriptures. You got to stop, you know, you got to stop this stuff following these people. And even stuff like this here. I don't know what kind of hell you went through and who you had to walk it through before. And you were quoting your scriptures at your workplace and lost your job. And you were standing for your marriage and he left you anyhow and she turned on you anyway. And you didn't think this thing could come to pass. And you said you're the head and not the tail. And you didn't have two pennies to rub together. Lost your house, lost your car, lost everything. God says, don't worry about what you went through. It was all part of the process because what I'm getting ready to do is going to be a public show off. Because because what I'm getting ready to do is going to be a public show off. What I'm getting ready to do is publicly show everybody who I am through your life. So he says, stand up. He says, arise up. And that word rise means awaken. It means to be aroused, to come out of obscurity, to come out of ruins. And God says, I'm bringing you out of obscurity. I'm bringing you out of ruins. Rise up, come into your being. He says, and stand forth, which means to establish covenant. God says, I am a covenant keeping God and I'm about to call you out of your ruins. I'm about to call you out of obscurity and I'm about to establish my covenant because you kept your heart right. You kept your word. You kept my word. You didn't deny my name. You didn't deny my power. You stayed in position and you know that you have a purpose. So get ready because I'm getting ready to cause you to stretch forth. That means to extend beyond, extend beyond the bankruptcy extend beyond the hurt extend beyond the loss extend beyond the pain extend behind the heartache extend beyond the haters extend beyond everything you went through he said I'm getting ready to restore your power so Paula this is absolutely you're off the rails you're a money grubbing fraud you're out for one thing Paula 
You have no concern. I don't care how much you say the name of Jesus, you use God, the Bible, you claim you want to help people and get them this and get them that. You want people to get something to you, all right? It's called money. So at any rate, we're going to come back to you another time here, Paula. But for now, let's move on to another twisted sister, Gloria Copeland. You know, you're the, you're supposed to control the weather. <laughs> I mean, Ken's the primary weatherman at our house, but when he's not there, I do it. You can see what's happening out there. It shows just like they have on at the weather, like on the news. I mean, he's got the computers, got the current weather on it and all that for flying. So uh, sometimes I'll hear something. I'll hear the thunder start. Maybe he'll still be asleep. And I'll say, Ken, you need to do something about this. <laughs> and knowing that. But you are the one that has authority over the weather. One day, Ken and Pat Boone, were, we were in Hawaii at their house, and we were, they were sitting outside, and there was a weather spout out over the ocean. And that's like a tornado, except it hits the water. And so they were sitting there, and they just watched it, rebuked it. It never did anything. One day, I was in the airplane in the back, and my little brother was in the back with me, and Ken was up front flying. And we were not in the weather, because we don't fly bad weather. But we, we could see the weather over here. And I looked out the window, and that tornado came down just like this, down toward the ground. And Ken said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You get back up there. So this is how I learned how to talk to tornadoes. I saw this. And that tornado went, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Even while I was watching him, my little brother was not a devout Christian at that time, and that was really good for him to see. <laughs> so you're the weatherman. You get out there, or the weather woman, whichever it is, and you talk to that thing, and you tell it, you're not coming here, I command you to dissipate, and you get back up there in Jesus' name. Well, listen, partners, we don't have a flu season. We've got a duck season, a deer season, but we don't have a flu season. And don't receive it when somebody threatens you with everybody's getting the flu. We've already had our shot. He bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. That's what we stand on. And by his stripes, we were healed. If you've already got the flu, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for every person that has symptoms of flu. I'm asking you, Lord, by your supernatural power to heal them now from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Flu, I bind you off of the people in the name of Jesus. Jesus himself gave us the flu shot. He redeemed us from the curse of flu. And we receive it and we take it and we are healed by his stripes. Amen. You know, the Bible says he himself bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. And by his stripes, we were healed. When we were healed, we are healed. So get on the word, stay on the word. And if, if you say, well, I don't have any symptoms of the flu. Well, great. That's the way it's supposed to be. Just keep saying that I'll never have the flu. I'll never have the flu. Put words. Inoculate yourself with the word of God. He himself bore my sicknesses, carried my diseases. And by his stripes, I was healed. I am healed. And Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Gloria, 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 goodness grief. Where do we start with you? None of us can control the weather. That's satanic. That's satanic. Folks, if you think you can control the weather, why aren't you walking on water? Why aren't you, you know, controlling the weather all the time, making it just perfect sunny days or whatever it is that you like? What she, she talks about controlling the weather and say, well, we never fly in bad weather. Oops, just hold on yourself. You can control the weather, but you don't fly in bad weather. Which one is it? Which one is it? You can't have it both ways. Folks, you can't control, the, you can't control anything. You cannot call things as, as though they are, that are not as though they are. That's what they like to go to all the time. If that's the case, then none of us have to do anything other than say, well, this is this and this is that and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to call this that. It's kind of like the same thing that Todd White was saying about because he's a believer, which he's not, okay, that he can just claim somebody. If they're a non-believer, he can just claim them. It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman!
Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. So go around claiming everybody then. Go around controlling the weather, claiming people. We don't have to preach the gospel. We can just claim stuff. We can name it, claim it. Uh, you know, I mean, really, this is ridiculous. So if you can, which you can't, Gloria, control the weather, none of us can, where were you during Katrina? Irma, any of the other ones, where were you doing during these natural disasters? It's ridiculous. You can't do anything about that. You can make all the little funny things whoop, 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 with the tornadoes and the water spouts and everything else, but it's ridiculous. You're just a liar and a fraud, and you guys have been doing Now Ken claims to be a billionaire. Well, gee, I wonder why, because you have defrauded people out of their hard-earned money for decades now, decades, people. Stop it. Stop giving to these people. I did it. My wife did it. We know. We're, we know what we're talking about here, folks. You've got to study the Bible for yourself correctly to get away from these people. If you don't, you're going to keep doing it. You're going to keep doing it. And yes, I know there's always going to be somebody that's going to get a check in the mail or their bank account's going to have something happen where it gets some money, maybe an error that gets fixed, or someone's going to... Um, you know, put something on your doorstep, a friend or, or a neighbor or maybe a relative is going to leave you some money. And it's just like being healed. I mean, yeah, there's always somebody that's going to be well, that was sick, that's going to get healed of cancer or whatever. Now, don't get me wrong here. We understand God can do anything he wants. God can heal anybody, anytime, do anything. He's proven that throughout the course of time. But he is not operating in that fashion during this dispensation. This dispensation of the grace of God that was given to Paul exclusively. So stop it, folks. And I know a lot of you out there right now are wanting to go, well, what about the gifts in Corinthians and the eight gifts and this and that? And, and Paul did this and Paul did that. You have to understand the context of what's going on, people. You have to. A lot of times, well, Paul, just like Jesus himself, just like the twelve, operated in the gifts for a period of time that were given to show the authority of the messenger in order to show people, hey, look, I'm really who I, am I, who I say I am, and I really have this authority. But those things with Paul stopped. If you study scripture correctly, you'll see that they stopped. They're no, they were no longer in operation once the church was established. So, folks, you've got to dig in. You've got to do, stop trusting what a smiling preacher's saying, what a Joel Osteen's saying, what, what your favorite uh, preacher down the block is saying, what mama said, daddy said. You know, all this stuff, folks, this evangelical mainstream tr traditional stuff, it's been killing people for years. If you don't get into the Bible and study for yourself and know where you belong, you must know who is speaking, who are they speaking to, and what are the circumstances. So, folks, please, this is why we keep saying this. You've got to stop listening to these frauds. They're lying to you. Stop looking at what you see and what you feel and what gives you goosebumps and what gives you the warm fuzzies and start going by the truth of God's word rightly divided. That's exactly what you've got to do. So, you know, and then now, Gloria, when well, you're talking about uh, binding the flu, <laughs> really, really? And then right after you say that, that, you, you, you use the reference to 1 Peter 2.24, I believe it is, and, and uh, Isaiah 53, where by his stripes we were healed or are healed, depends on which uh, scripture you're looking at there. And then you proceed to pray for people that have the flu so God will supernaturally heal them. You just got done saying that God did it. You, he did it all on the cross. And that's taken out of context anyway, what you're doing. But you just get done saying that by his stripes we're here. We don't have the flu. We don't have that. We have a, a duck season and a this season and whatever. But then you start praying for people with it. Which one is it? You, you can't make up your mind. That's Israel that's being spoken to. That's the little flock that's being spoken to in, in 1 Peter. You're, you're not on people. This has nothing to do with us whatsoever. You've got to stop listening to these things. Uh, you know, it's Gloria, you're just a fraud too, just like your husband is, just like most everybody in the word of faith thing, they very, have very little to say this truth. But the reason there is some truth once in a while is because Satan has to make it palatable in order for people to buy it. And like, well, that's in the Bible. And Jesus did say that. And what, well, you know what? Jesus said a lot of things. The whole Bible is, is inspired of God, and Jesus is God. But Jesus gave his last instructions after the finished cross work to the Apostle Paul. That's for everybody, this side of the cross. That's for everybody. 
There's no longer Jew nor Greek nor male nor female, bond nor free. We don't go to the Old Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's teaching the law. I know a lot of you people want to make comments and get mad and say all kinds of things about it. Look, folks, whether you like it or not, that has nothing to do with us. It didn't set the stage for something else. That was a particular set of instructions, a particular dispensation before the cross that everybody had to do. Now, everybody has to trust in solely that finished cross work for salvation. Then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit and our works it are the good works that we do are not to for salvation and they're not to maintain salvation. Those are the things that are going to be before the judgment seat when we go before Christ for rewards. It's good works and the good works, quite frankly, folks, as ministers of reconciliation and ambassadors for Christ is to preach this gospel, to see God's first Timothy two, four will done that would have all men be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. So again, Gloria, you know, you said that he bore our sicknesses uh, by his stripes. We were healed. And then you pray for people to be supernatural, he, uh, supernaturally healed. You can't bind the flu. You might bind your seatbelt buckle together on your one of your multiple, the multiple airplanes you guys have, or maybe a cinch on one of those uh, a flock of horses that you have, a herd of horses, I should say. But uh, you cannot bind the flu. None of us can. We can't do it. Uh, that's not for us. That is not what we're doing here today. So, folks, please, you got to stop listening to this stuff. This is only about the money. And Gloria, when you and then you do this little chant, uh, I, I I don't I think it was I don't have the flu I don't have the flu or I won't have the flu. Just keep saying that I'll never have the flu. I'll never have the flu. Put words. Inoculate yourself. This kind of sounds kind of like this, doesn't it? And think to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's, there's no, no place like home. There's no place like home. All right, so uh, enough of Paula and Gloria Copeland uh, for now. That's our first segment of Twisted Sisters. We're going to move on to our next segment here uh, coming up, which will be Joyce Meyer and a little bit of Beth Moore. Joyce Meyer, the queen, queen of heretics, uh, of lies and, and fraudulent things. She's like a uh, pretty much a female Tony Robbins. So anyway, we'll close out here. Uh, write us, email us, bobbyfaulkner777 at gmail.com, uh, ministerofreconciliation777 at gmail.com. Put your comments there, folks. If you've got something intelligent to say, I know some of you are just going to bash and just want to come against stuff, but unless you're willing to learn, folks, you're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to argue with you. We're going to bring this to people that want to learn. Go to truthtimeradio.com. We suggest this to people all the time. It's not about following a man. The King James Bible, Trey Searcy on Truth Time Radio, teaches from the King James Bible a lot of a wealth of valuable information on there, folks. Check it out. Check it out. Because you know what, folks? Hey, you say, well, you're following a man. Well, what do you think you're doing when you're following Todd White and, and, and Gloria Copeland and some of these other people? You're following people. We're not following a man. The only man we're following is Paul, who said, follow me after I follow Christ. That's his, his words are commandments from the Lord, folks. So wake up. Anyway, part two will be coming up. Thanks for watching.